You are listening to Aftersight. This recording is intended solely for individuals who are blind or have low vision. Thank you for joining us for the June 27th, 2024 Thursday reading of the Montrose and Delta News. As seen in the June 24th, 2024 edition of the Montrose Mirror. Today we will be reading the following main articles. City considers support for projects, welcomes intern Connor Bell, written by Caitlin Switzer. BOCC releases partial retainage for terminal expansion by Caitlin Switzer and following up with other miscellaneous articles. Let's begin. City considers support for projects, welcomes intern Connor Bell by Caitlin Switzer, Montrose. With two requests for city support on the agenda, all councillors were present as the Montrose City Council gathered for a work session on Monday, June 17th. Mayor J. David Reed said, Good morning, everyone. Can I have your attention, please? Work sessions are a time when council gets together to discuss upcoming issues and topics and items that will appear on the City Council agenda normally for action at a future council meeting, and that's generally within a couple of weeks following the work session. We take no public comment or public input, but of course the public is always welcome to attend our meetings. Discussion items. City staffer Anthony Rousseau introduced the first discussion item. Potato Growers Horizontal Improvement Support. The projected opening date for the project at 39 West Main Street will be in late fall, Rousseau said. Applicants Greg and David Fishering were present, and David discussed the project. We're in the last stage of finally getting this building back into use, he said. And this last stage is the most costly. To put it into use, we have had to connect it to basically every utility that you can think of. There was no sewer, water, electricity or gas to the historic structure, Fishering said, noting that the applicants have now connected all of those utilities. Other than fire suppression, all improvements have also benefited the four surrounding properties, although the Fisherings have borne the cost, he said. The current plan is to run an indoor marketplace inside the building, with a communal seating area and space for other vendors. Two food vendors, Sushi on the Roll and Meet and Gather, have already signed leases. A summary sheet included in the work session packet notes, the amount requested by applicant Dave and Greg Fishing is 418,817. This represents the horizontal site improvements needing to be made on the property. Half of the expenses are due to the condition and lack of utilities to the property. This is 12% of the total project cost, the summary sheet states. Mayor Pro Tem David Frank asked about the request for parking lot paving and said that the city does not traditionally pay to pave private parking lots. What would be different about this? City Manager Bill Bell said that paved lots and connectivity are needed in the neighbourhood. The project has been in the works for several years and is slightly behind schedule. Bell said, It is a little unique. It doesn't really set a precedent for future projects. We're really proud of the fact that the Fisherings, as a private entity, have been able to cash load this without a lot of private debt. Fisherings said that a change of use was required when they built the distillery next door, which is also part of the project. Changing the use required more funds to meet new city and CDOT standards. The city of Montrose helped with 4,500 through a facade grant. Councillor Judy Ann Files asked about city assistance with utilities. City manager Bell said that the percentage of assistance provided by the city is consistent with other projects. The city has waived $21,787 in in fees, Bell said. Files also asked about the historic vault that is located in the building. Fishering said he is considering turning it into a private whiskey vault. The lower portion of the building will be used for event space. Councillor Ed Ulibari 
asked about the kitchens, planned for the space. Fishering said there won't be hoods used. Greg Fishering said that there is space outside for food trucks and the city is helping to design a communal waste system for use by the applicants' business, as well as by the vendors. The second work session discussion item was a tap fee waiver request for the historic Montrose County Courthouse project. A summary sheet with project details is included in the work session packet. The summary sheet states, If approved by City Council, the City of Montrose will contribute $24,661.40 towards utility connection fees on behalf of Montrose County. The summary sheet includes a project description and reason for the request. The Montrose County Historic Courthouse was built nearly 102 years ago and has only undergone minor alterations over its history. It is currently listed on the National Register of Historic Places, 5MN1813. Successful completion of this project will provide Montrose County with an operational and efficient facility for staff and public, integrate new and existing parking, have a clear and simple signage plan, reduce operational and maintenance expense, and preserve the significant historic features of the building. Cost of restoration of a historical site is quite expensive and it has taken nearly six years to get to this point. The costs have steadily increased and we need assistance to make the project viable. Montrose County Manager John Washbush was present for the work session. He said that the county courthouse is a 101-year-old building in which nothing has ever been fixed. So the project is to fix everything. The historic front hall will be preserved as is, and the remainder of the structure has been gutted, Washbush said. All utilities have been undergrounded. As part of the project, DMEA worked with Montrose County. Utility connections to the neighbouring IT building have been updated to be independent of one another. It's a great project, Mayor Pro Tem David Frank said. I think that revitalising our downtown is of enormous benefit to the city as well as the county and draws people into Montrose, which helps generate revenue. I think it's a reasonable ask compared to a lot of other projects we see coming down the pike. Frank said that he loves the coordination and cooperation between city and county right now. It's taken us a lot of years to get here. I'm just really thankful and supportive of the relationship we have developed between the two. Mayor J. David Reed said that he appreciates the county taking on the courthouse project. Hats off to you guys and asked about a completion date. By contract, it is September of 25, Washbush said. Right now, demolition is essentially wrapping up. The upper two floors have been empty for around 25 years, Washburn said. We're getting the whole building back into use, and that hasn't occurred since the courts moved to the Justice Centre in 1998-1999. There will be a modern, code-compliant elevator to all four floors. Staff reports, Montrose Police Statistics. Police Chief Hall presented Montrose Police Department statistics for the first quarter of 2023 versus 2024 and year-end statistics comparing 2022 and 2023. Also included are statistics for animal control and for code enforcement. No code enforcement statistics are available for 2024 due to the lack of code enforcement officer. Hall discussed the important benefits but also downsides to body-worn cameras. There seems to be this push towards making law enforcement less about the criminal's defendant's actions and more about the police officer's actions, Hall said. Our criminal defence bar are doing massive requests for our internal records. Our body cam footage, they're trying to make these trials more about the police officer and their conduct than they actually are about the person they're really there for. The defendant. Hall commended City Public Safety Attorney Matthew Magliaro. 
He has been working diligently and daily responding to these defence bar requests without that public safety attorney position. I don't know how other police departments do it, with the massive number of requests we get, especially from the Public Defender's Office. Hall also discussed the Montrose Police Department department's new mounted patrol which brings officers on horseback to local parks and encourages the participation and partnership of local equestrians with horses of their own we have a community survey that says that our citizens want more patrol in our parks Hall said we've got 20 miles of patrols we've got individuals who are conducting illegal activity in our parks what a great way to get around and use a specific type of citizen volunteers to help us patrol our parks, he said. Montrose used to have a mounted unit in the 1970s. We're bringing it back, Hall said. Councillor Dave Frank gave a shout-out to a youth city councillor watching from the back of the room, but was told that it was new city intern Connor Bell. Councillor Judy Ann Files said, Welcome, Connor. Good job. With no further business, the work session was adjourned. BOCC releases partial retainage for terminal expansion by Caitlin Switzer. Montrose. Montrose Regional Airport continues to grow as county commissioners last week voted to release partial retainage to FCI constructors for the terminal expansion project. Also last week, commissioners approved an agreement with a private developer, MTJ Executive Hangers LLC, for a non-exclusive right to develop and construct hangars for sale and resale on airport ground, meeting a need for more private hangar space and infusing the Montrose economy, said the applicant's attorney, Brad Switzer. There is some economic impetus for Montrose. It's an economic driver with great potential, as internationally people in the aviation community will be hearing about the Montrose Airport because of this development, Switzer said. BOCC regular meeting. Commissioners were all present as Montrose Board of County Commissioners BOCC. Chair Roger Rash opened the regular meeting of Tuesday, June 18th. Welcome, everybody. Please take a seat and we'll get started with this Montrose County Commissioners meeting. BOCC Vice Chair Keith Caddy led in saying the Pledge of Allegiance and Pastor Roland Casales of Victory Baptist Church led in saying the invocation. Let us pray, Casales said, and ask blessings for all three commissioners. Also, I ask that you would help us to conduct ourselves with humility and ability to listen, to consider the concerns of others. I thank you for the citizens who are here today, who care enough to show up, and to make their voices heard, and to seek the prosperity of this county. Public comment period. There were no comments heard from the public on non-agenda items. County Manager. County Manager John Washbush had no changes to the meeting agenda. Consent agenda. Commissioners voted unanimously to accept consent agenda items as written. Montrose County Local Liquor Licensing Authority. Commissioners left regular session to reconvene as the Montrose County Local Liquor Licensing Authority, voting to approve a special events permit for the Montrose County Fair Board at the Montrose County Fairgrounds on July 26th and July 27th, 2024, before returning to regular session and reconvening as the BOCC. General Business and Administrative Items Montrose Regional Airport Director of Aviation, Lloyd Arnold, presented for consideration and acceptance of partial settlement. From attainage for the terminal expansion project, contract number 2021-189, the agenda item notes, the terminal expansion project was awarded to FCI Constructors Incorporated of Grand Junction, Colorado, on September 15, 2021. Notice of partial settlement. Retainage has been published pursuant to statute and no claims have been made. Partial retainage in the amount of $1,530,468.19 
will be released to FCI constructors. Arnold said there was a change in the final line, which should read partial retainage in the amount of $1,530,480.89 and work product of $50,649.30 for pay applications 20 and 25 for a total of $1,581,130.19 will be released to FCI. This is a partial release of retainage. We still are retaining $503,086.49. They have a few remaining items. Arnold presented for consideration on Airport Hangar Development Agreement with MTJ Executive Hangars, LLC, for a non-exclusive right to develop and construct hangars for sale to aircraft owners and to permit the developer the right to construct hangars for resale on ground owned by Montrose Regional Airport, including access to taxiways and runways. The term of this agreement shall be for 10 years, with the option of a 10-year renewal, as described in the agreement. The agreement has been reviewed by council. Arnold said, so for the right to do this, they will pay us an initial fee of $10,000 and then a yearly fee of $1,000. What is important to us as an airport is this a non-exclusive right, meaning we have more land available if there are other developers that want to build hangars or develop a different area of the airport. It's a nice benefit for the county. We don't have the capital outlay for the infrastructure. Having hangars that are built and ready to go is just a benefit. He recommended approval. Commissioners voted unanimously to approve the airport hangar development agreement. The third airport item was authorization of the chair's signature on change order number 12 in reference to the federal grant AIP-56 for the terminal expansion project. This includes federal and non-federal items for all costs described in the change order. Total cost is $141,432.77. The total cost of work described from $33,131,241.45 to $36,576,360.84. Arnold said... This will complete the terminal project other than the retainage. This will finish this out. It completes the project for us. So this is a notable moment, Commissioner Sue Hansen said. For me, it is yes, Arnold said. I thought I'd take a deep breath, maybe cry. BOCC Chair Roger Rash said that Arnold and his team have done an amazing job. Kudos to you and your staff. Change order number 12 for the terminal expansion project was unanimously approved. Planning and Development General Business. Rash opened a public hearing on the Ruben Gonzalez waiver, WV24-002, proposal for a waiver of the Montrose County Subdivision Regulations, section 3.20.B.A, lots in minor subdivisions, shall have a minimum road frontage of 200 fee at parcel 37230540014 road representing the applicant Ken Schaff answered questions Commissioner Sue Hansen moved to deny the proposed waiver based on the fact that it does not meet criteria in the regulations for a waiver, deviate significantly from the standards required in subdivision regulations, and there are additional avenues to subdivide the property. Commissioners voted to deny the proposal. Based on the findings of facts listed in paragraph 4 of the staff report, Commissioners voted unanimously to approve the Shivano Valley Large Tract Exemption, EX24-001, Proposal to divide three lots from a 101-acre parcel at parcel 399-505-100016-588073 Old Vance TRL Trail. 
Rationex opened a public hearing on the Verizon Wireless Special Use SU24-001 proposal to install a Verizon Wireless Telecom Power, a 100-foot tall mono-stealth pole at parcel 37673620200767456 66, Sunnyside Road Following some discussion amongst Commissioners and County Attorney Marty Whitmore, Rash asked the applicant to step forward. Speaking on behalf of Verizon was Herb Quintana of Denver. He discussed possible benefits of the proposed tower location and answered questions. Rash said that he was concerned about the possibility of the tower falling on private property. BOCC Vice Chair Keith Caddy asked whether it would be a problem to set the tower back 150 feet rather than 95 feet from the property line. Quintana said that that would not be a problem. Rash opened the floor to public comment. A number of citizens spoke in opposition to the tower. Comments and concerns included the possibility of negative impacts to property values, the fact that there are other possible cell phone providers and other possible locations for the tower, possible health and welfare concerns, the possibility of other entities than Verizon leasing space on the tower, and a sense of frustration that the tower is being considered despite overwhelming opposition by those who will be directly impacted. Montreux Regional Airport Director of Aviation, Lloyd Arnold, asked whether a 7,460 airport airspace analysis had been conducted. Quintana said that it had. Rash closed public comment and asked for a motion. Commissioner Sue Hansen said that despite the opposition to the tower, the applicant has followed county regulation and is essentially operating according to county zoning. County Attorney Marty Whitmore said that, as noted in the staff report, the application is in compliance with the land use code and zoning regulations as they stand. Still, the board does have the ability to impose terms and conditions on locations, she said. BOCC Vice Chair Keith Caddy said, One thing I would like to look at would be the 150 feet and the pine tree in an area that looks like a bunch of cottonwoods. I don't know if that would be good or not, There's other options I've been told. Hansen said that there are people struggling for connectivity and asked whether there are sufficient grounds to deny the application or continue the hearing. County Attorney Marty Whitmore declined to give a legal opinion on sufficiency of the evidence outside of the executive session, but said, you do have the ability to continue the application for further investigation. You can continue it for deliberation and final decision if you simply want to consider it further. Hansen moved to continue the hearing to the next BOCC meeting on July 17th to allow us to investigate the concerns of the public and some of the other things that have been mentioned about location and whatnot. The motion was unanimously approved. Public comment on the application is now closed. Hansen said she asked Planning and Development Director Talmadge Richmond to obtain more information on other potential locations and to clarify setbacks Following a brief public hearing, commissioners voted unanimously to approve a proposed amendment to the subdivision regulations amendment. With no further business and no executive session, the BOCC voted to adjourn. Regional news briefs. Suspect hospitalised after Alamosa Sheriff deputies return fire. Special to the Mirror, Alamosa. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation is investigating a law enforcement shooting in Alamosa that left a suspect with non-life-threatening injuries. On Wednesday, June 19th, 2024, at approximately 12.06 a.m., just after midnight, an Alamosa Sheriff's deputy attempted to contact a red Ford Explorer driving carelessly in a Safeway parking lot. The driver attempted to elude, and a pursuit ensued, with two other deputies assisting. The driver drove over a grassy median into a residential area, where the driver then got out of his SUV and ran on foot. An Alamosa deputy verbally engaged an adult male in the 1200 block of 3rd Street, later identified as Justin Claude Trujillo. The male produced a handgun and fired at least one shot. All three deputies returned fire, striking Trujillo two times, once in the abdomen and once in the leg. Alamosa deputies provided medical intervention and then took him into custody. 
Trujillo was transported to a local hospital and then transferred to a hospital in Colorado Springs, where he is in stable condition. The suspect will face the following charges. Criminal attempt, murder in the first degree of a peace officer. Assault in the first degree. Vehicular eluding, menacing. Possession of a weapon by previous offender. All three deputies have placed have been placed on administrative leave pending the investigation. Colorado News Briefs. The economic impact of a DUI. Special to the Mirror, Colorado. Colorado state troopers are on the lookout for drivers to exhibit behaviours associated with impairment. In 2023, troopers arrested over 4,100 motorists, engaging in risk-taking behaviour. In Colorado, one-third, that's 3.2%, of traffic fatalities involve a driver who is impaired. A recent calculation finds that the average first-time DUI in Colorado costs $13,530. You will be responsible for paying court costs, towing and vehicle storage fees, ignition interlock rental fees, and much more. Plus, anticipate your auto insurance to jump up significantly. This does not factor in the hours a person will devote to going through all the requirements, such as probation, alcohol and drug therapy, attending a victim impact panel and complying with the ignition interlock device in your vehicle. If your job has policies regarding convictions or rules specific to impaired driving, it could mean the loss of employment. People of all ages are arrested for impaired driving in Colorado, and this crime, like many others, can stick with you for multiple years after occurring. According to NHTSA, the age with the most DUIs is 21 to 24, but last year, 30 to 39-year-olds surpassed Colorado State Patrol arrests for impaired driving. Drivers in their 20s and 30s are historically the top two age groups year over year for patrol impaired driving contracts. And that is all we have time for today. Thank you for listening to the Montrose and Delta News.